So good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great um, conference so far. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, fantastic keynotes. Ollie said he approved of my duck, so I feel pretty validated there with a capital V, so that's great. So my name's Graham McAlooney, and this is my colleague Matt Robson from the University of Sheffield, and we're going to talk a little bit about some work we've been doing um, bringing rich media feedback into the uh, assessment process at Sheffield. So uh, we'll give a bit of context, um, and then we're going to dive in with a case study that Matt's been doing from his own practice, which is great. Um, so I'm going to try and go fairly quickly through these, in fact, so much so... I'm going to set a timer on my phone, isn't that, uh, isn't that something? So um, I realise this is um, context that a lot of people are aware of, but just in case people aren't, let's just set the agenda. So this is the classic quote that comes from, um, I, I saw Lisa earlier on, from your document, um, really saying that, you know, assessment is so important, but yet still it represents a major source of stress and, and dissatisfaction from our students um, and you know, there's a real sense that we haven't quite got this right yet. Uh, we have very high aims about wanting to use assessment as a really good tool for learning rather than just cert certification but maybe we're not there yet and perhaps students' anxiety may have even become a bit more increased since we've introduced fees. And then the challenges that we face when trying to actually change this is that whilst our institutions may, ha may have very strong and noble um, the policies that they want us to adhere to. We still find that there's a huge resistance uh, to change practice. Uh, I sometimes say to people that, you know, if you want to talk to academics about changing assessment practice, you might as well uh, offer to kidnap their children. And it's the kind of same kind of response you're going to get. And we have other questions about, you know, what are we really doing with assessment? Are we over-assessing? Um, People will say, well, you know, we put all this effort into feedback, the students don't use it. So there's still that kind of tension between uh, various uh, people, various stakeholders, I guess. So electronic management of assessment has um, offered to, uh, and, and uh, I believe does actually deliver on a lot of this, has really helped out in, you know, not just the logistics of submission and the sustainability of not printing out uh, reams of paper um, every semester. We used to have 24-hour printer queues in our, in our information commons at, at the end of term. Um, but really, we, we know that the, the tools um, or some of the things, the affordances of the technology mean that we can um, enhance the quality of feedback that students are getting. So those can be um, in, in terms of written feedback, uh, using tools like Grade Mark, it's not the only one, of course, but also to provide rich media feedback, by which we define as audio, uh, screencast or video. Um, and again, this, this, is not, um, this is not new. I know in, in Melsig, for example, those of you who are familiar with the work in Melsig, we've been trying to promote rich media feedback for a decade, and there's been some really sort of foundational projects like the Sounds Good project that uh, Bob Rotherham did in about 2007. Um, and there's quite a lot of consensus that students really do engage well with um, technology-enhanced feedback or rich media feedback, the kinds of things that we get back from student evaluation is that um, students really love the fact that there's a personal dimension to it. Um, practitioners, um, and we'll, we'll probably hear about, a bit more about this in a moment, um, it's actually logistically possible to give a higher quantity and quality of feedback. Uh, people feel they can understand um, the comments a little bit more. And for specific kinds of assessment, and we'll look at this in a bit, uh, in a bit more detail in a moment, it can actually be more suited to the very uh, assessment type that we're doing, and I think that's a really important point. So, it's a great old thing, but it's also probably fair to say that certainly um, at places like Sheffield, as a concept it's, or as a practice, it's not exactly um, flown off the shelves, can we say. So, what are the barriers? Well, in the absence of an integrated system that enables you to do it, typically case studies I've come across, they tend to represent really kind of complicated and fiddly workflows. People having to do things like record some audio with an audio recorder, save it out as an MP3, implement some kind of file nomenclature system which enables you to map the piece of work against the student. What if it's anonymous, what if it's anonymous submission? That's a problem, isn't it? How do we then get it back to the students in a safe and secure way? And all of this adds up to something that isn't really in any way a, a properly scalable solution, or indeed sustainable. So in Sheffield, um, we uh, made some inroads into this starting a couple of years ago, 
by uh, implementing uh, the Kaltura family of products, which are, um, uh, there's many fantastic products with Kaltura, one of which is the way that it's integrated within the Blackboard virtual learning environment. And that's really kind of made a huge difference. And so what we did when we first implemented Kaltura, before we rolled it out, we started a number of pilots with a number of departments. They had different aims, but four of our pilots uh, really engaged with the fact that they could use the tools presented to them now to do and provide uh, rich media feedback. So what I'm going to do now is hand over to Matt, who's going to talk a little bit more about what you've been doing. Thank you, Graham. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm Matt Robson. Uh, I'm a university teacher at the Department of Journalism Studies in Sheffield. Um, specifically, um, I teach the very practical parts of um, TV, filming, editing, um, producing TV news items. So, for me, the assessments that I do, it's really helpful to have this kind of rich media feedback available. In the bad old days, when I was doing written feedback, um, I might say something to a student, I might write them a comment that would say, in your interview, you don't seem to remember the rule of thirds, the headroom on your shot is, is not um, particularly brilliant. So maybe you, don't, maybe you understand those terminologies, that jargon, but if you're the student and you've forgotten those things, which is why you didn't apply them, then what does that feedback actually mean? Whereas if I can put their interview on the screen, I can point to it on the screen, I can very much more easily help them to understand what's going on. But again, I'm trying to describe something with words which is much better watched, so hopefully this is going to play. No, it didn't. Let's do uh, Click it on there. There we go. And then when we talk about um, runner Nicola Squires, we see a shot of Nicola. So again, this is probably the right choice of shot, but it does go on for quite a long time. And here, she doesn't quite leave frame before you cut to the interview. So you just needed to let this run on a couple more sort of frames, you know, two or three more would have done it and she would have cleared the frame and that would be a much less jumpy edit. Um, and I think part of the reason is you, you can't do that is because here you've got all of your material on the same video and audio track. So really, you need this to be um, up here, it needs to be up there, you need your sound to be one track lower down, and then if you need to, you can just extend that a little bit. But because everything's on the same tracks, it's not going to let you do that. Um, so that is part of the problem. Uh, you, if your stuff's on the wrong track, you can't use the full capabilities of the editing program. So there that clip, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds long, but I've been, given, been able to give some really very detailed feedback um, and sp specifically for this student to help them sort of improve what they might be able to do the next time they do some editing. So I think that's very clear. I don't think there's any way that I could write that down and get, get that across. Um, so I've been doing this for a few years, um, but as Graham was saying earlier on, it was very, very fiddly, trying to use different apps, different ways of doing it. It wasn't working particularly well. So, yeah, Kaltura, when that came along and when Graham told me about that, I really wanted to get involved um, because it has made my life, certainly, a whole load easier. Um, students can submit their work using this system. It goes straight into the, the Blackboard system on, um, for, for submission. Um, I've also been using another part of the system to record these bits of screencast feedback and then once I've recorded it, I can just slot it straight back into the grade centre so that when the student looks for their mark and looks for their feedback, it's just there on the screen. Again, they just click on one piece of, uh, click on the icon and then they can play that, uh, that feedback. Um, and that's been really, really helpful. For me, as a teacher, the best thing about it is it's made it quicker. Um, it's made it, I'd say, at least five minutes per piece of work faster in terms of integrating that workflow, getting it all done. And five minutes may not sound like much, but if you've got 40 or 50 students uh, for each assessment, then that's as much as half a day that I've got back, which always gets filled up with something else, of course, 
But there you go, um, at least I've now got the chance to do those things. I'm less likely to be marking well into the night, which is always good. Uh, so, of course, every little uh, case study and um, pilot needs some evaluation. So I've been asking my students what they think about this rich media feedback, and I've been asking them to compare um, what's um, on, on a module where they get some written feedback on one assessment and my uh, rich media feedback on another assessment. And so these are the results. You, know, you, can, you can see the, the numbers, that's nice. Um, so students on the whole found video feedback much easier to understand. And you know, a big preference for, for video. Um, a slightly smaller preference for receiving their feedback in, in video but still a large majority. Um, part of this is to do with accessing um, the, the videos. I've made these um, screencasts using a big display. You've seen it on a big display here. Students, of course, are watching it on their mobiles. So some of that fine, fine detail may be a little bit lost there. So it's something that I've got to think about there. Um, and then a big preference for using more video feedback, please. And then some, some comments that I hope back up what we've been talking about. Um, video is a great idea. Yeah, I think it's very good that students actually understand where their grade is coming from because grades are very important to, to a lot of students these days. Um, and they really understand why everything is coming back to them in the way that it is. And then someone wrote something nice about me, so forgive my vanity for including that one there. Um, but yeah, again, again, it sort of proves what we've been talking about. Would you like to? Thanks very much, Matt. So, uh, in conclusion, obviously, uh, um, um, there's other pilots, and, um, and we know now that we're, we're very confident that this is um, being a very highly effective and highly valued way of feeding back to our students. Uh, thinking more broadly uh, from, uh, I'm going to sort of take a perspective of, from a learning technology management sort of central position and in a way this actually echoes what Melissa was saying on Tuesday morning is that because we've got a process which has been vastly simplified by the tight integration between in this case Kaltura and Blackboard, what we're actually seeing is a series of marginal gains and we're actually getting the benefit of a summation of those marginal gains, a little bit like you know, the sorts of things that the British Olympic cycling team were talking about five years ago. And as Matt said, these really add up. Uh, uh, they add up to provide whole new opportunities. And this is what the people in our other pilot departments who aren't here today have said. So, so to, to paraphrase what Melissa was saying, you know, here's a big thing, which is actually lots of little things. And I think that's really valuable. I think you know, if there's one take home from that, from those of us who are in a more learning technology uh, management or provision role, I might say. And then, of course, perhaps harder to answer right here and now are some of the broader questions. So, at this moment in time, certainly the University of Sheffield, rich media feedback might be a bit of a novelty. It's a new thing. Um, if that was the norm, would people still comment on it? But, of course, if it was the norm, why would they? Because that would be the norm, of course. Um, and then, again, we've, we've got the broader questions about you know, do we really need to assess as much as we do assess? How does all this um, broad pattern of assessment fit with, for example, adopting more of a program level of view, program level uh, approach to learning and teaching in our courses, which I think is, again, a very um, contemporary uh, issue for many of us. So that's uh, pretty much what we had to, had to say. So thank you very much for listening to us and uh, very keen to take any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Matt and Graham. Uh, are there any questions here in the, in the live audience? Yep, just jump at the back there. There's a wee mic coming, coming to you there. Thanks. Uh, Martin Compton, University of Greenwich. Question for Matt. Um, like I um, was trying to say before, I, I really favour this. I think it's absolutely brilliant. There's multiple ways of, of doing it. You've showed us one, one example. But how do you account for the 12 to 20 percent that are less than keen? And are you going to do anything to perhaps accommodate them? Or is it going to be, no, this is better for you? 
Um, well, I'm not ever in a position to sort of make anybody do anything. Um, I, I can only show people what I've done and say I've found it easier and maybe you want to have a go as well. Um, do, do you mean your students? All oh, right, sorry, okay, not staff. Okay, um, so I don't know. I don't, 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 don't know about that. I mean, I don't think they don't like it, but I think they prefer written stuff because obviously we all have different learning preferences. Um, for me, I still believe in its value. I'm going to I'm going to carry on doing it. That may be a bit mean of me, um, but yeah, maybe maybe I need to sort of think about that as well in terms of allowing another way of doing it for them. But for me, it works, and hopefully they will all eventually come round to enjoying that as well. Um, I think, was there another question from the floor there? No. Um, so we've had a few in from VVOX, so I'll take the most yeah. popular ones first. Um, so why do you think that audiovisual feedback is not as prevalent as traditional and more time-intensive methods? Well, I wonder whether it's um, because whether we've been very fortunate to have access to um, the tools that enable us to, to be able to roll this out now in a sustainable way. As I said before, um, I think when you read some of the early literature or if you've ever been to conferences with people talking about this, um, some of the some of the logistics behind doing this is is quite frankly a, a little bit o uh, uh, onerous and has probably been a bit of a barrier to people. So I do think that is a real issue, um, and I think you know because of that uh, it hasn't scaled up. Because of that, it hasn't uh, become a normality for people to do, and maybe that will, will change. I think certainly it's been very well received when we promoted it internally in Sheffield colleagues like uh, uh, Matt and, and from our other departments as well that's architecture and law and, and uh, education um, sorry uh, economics we've been doing it so I just think it's because it's still fairly a new thing to actually be able to do in a reliable way I don't know if that answers the question that's certainly what we found um, so another question there have you tried sharing the students media feedback with other students to give them a wider range of resources to look at and if so how to go um, no, I think it's the, it's the simple answer, um, and I think there's difficulty with sort of an anonymity and personal data and, and all of that. I mean, if I if I start sharing um, some someone's feedback, then I'd have to be very careful in terms of anonymising it and ad adapting it. So, um, probably simply put, that's quite a lot of work, which I may not have time for. But it's a nice idea, yeah, in, in terms of a way of learning. But I think probably. I do, I do learn things about the common mistakes and maybe can put f sort of forward things the next time I see those students about how, you know, the, the, sort of the, the, the common faults, if you want, or the common successes. Certainly the, the way the technology is configured, that would be an affordance. So the beauty of having it tied into um, the same ecosystem into which the students are submitting their work, it means we've actually got the work and... Um, or Matt's recordings or, and or any other rich media feedback doing that could be extracted and repurposed in that kind of way if we felt that was appropriate. I suppose one question is, would you do that with other written feedback? I don't know. Um, so another question here about Grademark, um, because it has the option for audio feedback. So do you think that would be an option to overcome the challenges or why was that not? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not the world's... Uh, from what I know about Grademark, it has up to historically ha uh, imposed um, a certain limit on the amount of um, uh, audio that you can record, and it is only audio. I think what Matt's really clearly demonstrated is when we're doing submissions that may be visual or, in Matt's case, also quite technical, because they're actually cause they were, like, diving right down into the process of doing some editing. Audio, whilst it's great, certainly wouldn't give that degree of resolution, would it? But, but no, we would certainly acknowledge the fact that Grademark uh, does provide that, but um, the limitation, I think, that some people uh, found with, with, um, uh, with the limit on audio recording has been a bit of a barrier. Um, the other thing about Grademark is not everyone in our institution, for example, uses Turnitin all the time. But quite a lot of people use traditional Blackboard, because uh, we are a Blackboard house, um, use the, the, the out-of-the-box Blackboard um, submission point as well. So again... That's a, another reason. But, you know, Grademark has been a game changer in its own way because Grademark has a, an iPad app and in, in the broader campaign to get colleagues over into electronic management of assessment, that's been a, a really important tool as well. So, yeah. 
Um, so folks, I think we'll maybe start there because I know there's only a short break now between this session and the next one. So apologies if we didn't get to your question. Hopefully you can maybe get a chat. Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with multiple, our Jupyter Notebook servers. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.